Hey guys, TJ Hernandez here, and I'm the founder of RosterCoach.com, a classroom-style video-based site that's designed to help you improve your daily fantasy sports game. To give you an idea of what RosterCoach has to offer, here's a preview of the third lesson in our latest course, How to Be Profitable Playing PGA DFS. If you enjoy what you see, please like and share the video, and don't forget to leave a comment below. and welcome back to the third part of our How to Play PGA Daily Fantasy. Uh, In the first episode, we did a quick little introduction talking about the best ways, well, not really the best ways, but just how to construct a roster for DraftKings, the statistics that we are going to look at uh, when we went through that in episode two. And in the third episode, we're going to talk about probably the most contentious part of PGA Daily Fantasy. If you spent any time on Twitter looking at DFS professionals and DFS content providers such as myself, probably the largest argument that you're ever going to see is course history versus current form. And uh, to explain current form a little bit, that basically goes back to the scoring average that we talked about uh, in our last episode, one of the statistics. And we can see here on the right-hand part over here, you see the current form. Uh, So we see guys like Wesley Bryan, who in his last four events has a fourth, a fourth, a 42nd, and then three straight missed cuts before that. But he doesn't have any course history because he is a new player on tour and therefore has not played this event and not played this course. Current form for me tends to be a little bit more indicative of a play that I want to use on my DraftKings PGA Daily Fantasy rosters. The other side of that coin are course history. Course history is a very simple theorem, and I think intuitively it does make a lot of sense. Uh, A lot of the math does not end up backing it up, does not make course history that statistically significant. However, I think it is one of those cases where you need to look at it individually. There are just certain golfers who always play well in Florida. For example, the way the PGA Tour season is segmented, they play in Hawaii and California, then they go to Florida, then they go to Texas, and after that, once it gets to the the summer, sort of spring months, uh, the rest of the year more or less kind of jumps around, but... Course history is basically guys who have repeated success at one event tend to be very good plays moving forward. Uh, So just for example, if we are looking at this event, Grand Dillette, fifth last year, year off, eighth year before, 17 missed cut. Luke Donald, never missed a cut here, has won with three top tens outside of that win. That would generally make him what we would consider... Uh, a very good course history play. You might hear the term course horse, uh, something like that. And really, the people that argue that that ends up mattering for daily fantasy are just saying because a guy has performed well at this course, at this event in years past, it is likely indicative that they will perform well, that they will score well at that course going forward. One of the problems with this approach is that it's unable to take into account changes in the course. A lot of these courses do tend to undergo renovations. They add bunkers, take bunkers away. One of the big things that has happened is they've made a lot of these courses longer uh, because golfers are so much better, the equipment's so much better, guys are just hitting the ball further, so they've had to lengthen a bunch of these courses, and generally, in run-ups to the event, we'll know if the course is going to be longer or more difficult, but it's hard to put that in application relative to course history because there are just so many variables. One of the things that I would caution listeners of this series about is relying too heavily on course form because of what we talked about last episode. Scoring average, strokes gain, tee to green, birdie or better percentage, those are just going to be better indicators of future success than course history. Taking a guy with a really high scoring average just because he happens to have good numbers in the course history sheet is not necessarily going to be an avenue towards success. There are a lot of things that go into success at a golf tournament, Uh, strength of the field, weather conditions, all sorts of variables that you really just can't capture by simply looking at a number that tells you how well a guy has done at a course in the past. 
Another thing that comes into play with course history is that if a player does have significant success at an event in the past, that will a lot of the times be priced in to their price tag on DraftKings.